Yes, my name is Aloy Bejimako. I'm a legal practitioner and I'm the special counsel to Mansedna de Kama and the indigenous people of Biafra. Okay, well, you know, this case, for those that have been following the case, the case, uh, I started this case in late August last year, uh, precisely on 27th August. That was a few days, just a few days before the court went on vacation. So and the case was put in abeyance until the court returned from vacation in early October. So from then on, the hearing proceeded, and I'm happy that it, it proceeded quickly and expeditiously, and uh, I was able to conclude the case on 10th December. The case bordered primarily on the violations, various violations of fundamental rights of my client, Mazin Nandekan, which I catalogued uh, from September 2017 to uh, June 19, 2021, when he was renditioned in Kenya. So it's my belief as a lawyer that there was no break in the COSA check that started from September 2017 to what happened in Kenya in June 2021 uh, because it was the military invasion of his home in Afraku Ibe Kumaya in 2017 that led to his flight of safety which was characterized by his detractors as having jumped bail so the, the judgment of yesterday has diminished that notion that he jumped bail in 2017 because the, the court ruled that he was justified in exiting from the environment that posed such potent threat to his life. So by holding that his fundamental rights were violated by that invasion, uh, impliedly uh, the conclusion can be drawn that the notion that he John Bell or voluntarily refused to take his trial in 2017 has been completely obliterated. So the judgment of yesterday does not have impact only within the confines of the judgment or the framework of the judgment. The impact is external and is going to reverberate into the criminal trial that is pending before the Federal High Court in Abuja. Well, I sought several reliefs uh, that's strategic. You see, when you go to um, court of law with breach of your rights, you just have to split them up and see the one that you can get. It's, it must, it's more like uh, shadow boxing. There was no way I could compress all the violations into one. So I split them up between the violations that occurred in Nigeria in 2017 and the one that occurred in Kenya in 2021 to the one that is now occurring in Nigeria, um, pursuant to his, uh, or flowing from his detention at the, at the DSS. So I split them up and I got some, I didn't get all. That is correct thing to say. But you see, um, uh, it's not expected that when you go into court, you are going to win everything. We are happy with the uh, verdict of the court. Yes, I said something uh, similar to it previously. Yes, it will have impact in several ways. For example, uh, the, in, the, 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 the uh, immediate impact is that it has resolved the issue of Mazi Nandekan jumping bail in his favor. Before this judgment yesterday, that notion that he jumped bail persisted as a reality. You understand? That is the immediate impact. The other impact is that the judgment has opened a new vista for exploring other options to addressing the Biafran question, the Biafran agitation. Because the judge did make a recommendation very strongly at the end of reading the judgment, which is on record, that the government should pursue alternative avenues to resolving the Biafran conundrum, the Biafran agitation and the predicament in, in which it has put Mazen Nandekano, who, as we have always uh, told the general public, has done, done nothing wrong than uh, pursuing uh, self-determination through means uh, approved by domestic and international law. So um, I see a situation where 
um, is going to have such impacts plus more. The judgment, I think, also will have a positive impact on any application for bail that we spend in Abuja, and I think it will also have impact on any preliminary objection to the jurisdiction of the court in Abuja to continue with the trial. The, the damages awarded by the, by the court to the tune of one billion. You see, a lot of people have publicly made very much hair about this one billion. Some people were saying, oh, Ibuho was given 20 billion, why would the land they can't get one billion? They are missing the point. I don't think Ibuho is as impressed with his 20 billion as he was impressed by the pronouncement of the Ohio State High Court that saved the termination, the enterprise that put him in trouble. is legal. That's more important than 20 billion. Similarly, in this case, judgment in favor of Nande Khan yesterday, in which the court awarded 1 billion naira, that 1 billion naira pales in comparison to the kernel of the judgment, to the tenor, the reach, and the import, the implication and the impact of the judgment on the public consciousness that federal government committed atrocities and violations of Kano's rights. This is the first time the GAFO has come down on that proposition that Mazin Nandi Kano is not the bad guy anymore. It's the federal government that is not the bad guy. So we didn't go into court looking for money. We went into court looking for justice that is more than money. After all, you know, uh, this suit uh, did not pretend or pretend to represent the other parties that suffered injuries from their attack including the 28 people that lost their lives and other people that suffered other injuries. Those are separate issues that could be litigated in the future. We went with the narrow issue and that narrow issue was what decided, which was that injustice was visited on Mazin and the Kano by the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I didn't, I didn't directly do that. After the judgment yesterday, I was informed that he was still in court in Abuja when the, when the judgment broke. So I think someone noticed it, or someone who was inside the court, who had his phone, an Android phone, saw it on social media and showed it to him, and he was, I, I was told he was gratified. He was very happy with it. I haven't seen him, I'll see him in the next few days, so I will know for sure how he feels about it. Well, you see, there's this notion that has been out there that IPOB members are violent. These are people I have represented since 2017. I think that was in September 2017 when Mazen Kano returned my services. He instructed me. So I have not had any personal experience of IPOB members tending towards violence. You understand me? If there has been anything, it might have been something akin to self-defense, which you and I possess as of a right. As I'm speaking here, if somebody comes to attack me, I'll probably my first instinct will be to defend myself. I, I'm not saying the occasion has arisen. I'm saying it as a postulation, as, a, 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 as a, some kind of a proposition that if any such thing occurred at all, it must have been within the framework of self-defense. So, but IPOB people are not offensive people with any form of violence whatsoever. That's my own personal experience. So, I will advise them to continue to be that way, uh, regardless of the level of provocation. Uh, because I do believe that at some point, uh, the government of the day will see eye to eye with them and the members of the international community and men and women of goodwill out there who would know for sure that self-determination is not an offense. It's the government that is criminalizing it. So that is what is overheating the quality. Uh, what makes it look like IPOB people are bad guys is because the government is criminalizing their conduct. If the government does not criminalize their conduct, there wouldn't have been any need for anything, for anybody to worry about, uh, about violence in Southeast or insecurity in Southeast or something. So I think the government has taken some wrong steps and if it, if it does now retrace its steps and pursue the path of dialogue, everybody will be happier for it.
we, well, you know, everybody has been saying, um, last month, two months ago, um, Basilika Mechi, a seasoned senior statesman, led a delegation of highly respected Igbo people to the president seeking political solutions to the Biafran agitation. Southeast governors, despite, you know, their um, uh, ineffectiveness in, in certain things, uh, or despite the doubts people have about their sincerity, not me, but people do doubt their sincerity, but on this very issue of seeking political solution, I think they have taken some sincere steps. There's also a group that is known that as uh, like a group of bishops and senior chiefs at SS in Ibolan that have also told the same part. And even private citizens have added their voice. And just yesterday, the judge added his own voice. So, and the president uh, said something that, well, uh, he would consider a political solution if the judiciary makes some pronouncement. He didn't say it directly, but that's what he seems to be saying when he appeared to have washed his hands off it. He left it to the judiciary. So yesterday, one judiciary has said something. So I invite Mr. President to be true to his word and take the bull by the horns and see this as an opportunity to look at this very matter of agitation for Biafra from a new point of view.